for to find a spot but very slowly bring it back until I find the exact spot I'm looking for whether that be gravel or silt or etc. As soon as I've found that I'm going to wind the marker up or let the marker come to the surface um, and then actually measure it back down from top to bottom to get the exact depth on the, of what that area is to make sure I'm happy with that. Um, as soon as I've got the marker back down to the bottom I'll then put the line in, back into the clip on the reel and bring that rod back in as soon as I'm happy with it so I can then find what's, what's on the inside of that spot as well as, as the exact spot that I'm fishing on just in case there's something a bit better on the inside. As soon as I've got that in what I'll do is, is walk up the bank with the marker place the marker on a certain point and then walk off the line until I come to the line clip. As soon as I come to the line clip, uh, I then put a marking on the line there, just in case I, I tend the, the line happens to bump, bump out the clip or whatever. I then take my spod rod and put the spod on the, the spot where the marker is, pace off to the same distance and actually clip the marker up to that spot. So I'm going to spod right over the top of the area that I'm looking at fishing. Um, but I'd like to, I'd, I'd rather spod to, to an area without the marker actually being there. I think it, it, it saves a lot of problems with you getting Type tangled up with your marker. Uh, what I found over the years is by by spotting with with not having the marker out there, it does save a lot of problems with picking the marker up. And the other thing is, I found that because you continually cast into a line rather than actually looking at the marker, as soon as you take that marker out of the water, it, it it tends to be a lot more difficult if you've done your spotting onto the marker to hit that same spot. It always looks short or slightly longer or whatever. So I know that with these lines clipped up and and spotting without the marker there, I'm going through the exact cast just on sight and feel so that when I go to actually cast it in the middle of the night or I'm half asleep or whatever hopefully after having a take I can hit that spot because I've, I've got that cast set in my brain of exactly how much to give it when to feather it down to actually hit that clip smack on the spot. Right, after walking the lines up and, and actually having the lines clipped, uh, that's all very well, but it's causing extra disturbance on the bank and an extra movement around there that you don't really need. Um, and it's, I'm just going to show you a couple of different things that I use to, to actually mark the lines onto those particular areas on different lines, uh, whether it's a short range rod or a long range rod. Uh, these are the two items that I use. First one is a permanent marker pen, uh, so I can actually put a marking on the line that hopefully is visible enough. They, they do tend to wear off after a while, so if you are expecting a lot of action, what I tend to do as well is, is use some of this marker braid um, and actually put a stop knot onto the line, onto the exact position where the, uh, the top of the spool is and where I'm going to clip, so that any time during the night, if I need to recast, I can cast away from the area, feel the... Uh, the stop knot going through my fingers and then come back to it and clip in exactly the same position. All I need to do then is to get back to my foot position in the swim. As long as my feet are in the same position, I cast on exactly the same line and feather it, I'm going to hit that spot every single time, which is, which is really important on some lakes like this. You know, you, you have got certain areas out there where it's going to, you're going to be fishing on four or five foot of water and just behind it, uh, with an extra few feet, you're going to be dropping down to eight, nine, ten foot, which is, you know, possibly not what you want to be doing in those, those days. And I'll just show you on the line there, there's the, the stop knot and if I now, if I, if I place the stop knot back to the spool there, the, that's the exact position of clipping the line. Um, on, a, on a long range rod, obviously with the, 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 the stop knot on there, it can slow your cast down and cause you a few problems. So that's when I tend to use the marker pen. And as you can see on this spool here, uh, I've got the black marker line across there and that's set exactly the same as the last one so that as soon as I get back to that particular area into the clip the only di thing different I do with this every cast is I remark it just put an extra little bit on there because as I said before the, the, the marker pen will actually wear off um, and if, if it is quite a dark night and you don't want to use too much light it is a little bit difficult seeing them so for long range just a mark and then short range with, uh, with a piece of marker braid Time is quite short on this film, so unfortunately we're going to have to cut it short just there. But hopefully it's given you an idea and, and maybe a starting point to come onto the venue as far as bait and rigs and baiting is concerned. It is one of those venues that you're going to continually be learning all the time you're down here. And there are an awful lot of people down here that will help you along the way with that. So all it leaves me to say is I look forward to seeing you soon and all the best. 
Well, some pretty good advice there from Brian. In fact, I know Brian also likes his surface fishing, having caught a number of good fish. So, talking about surface fishing, let me give you another little tip. Now, if you're a floater angler, one of the things you'll have in your tackle bag is, uh, is line grease. You know, often we, we want to keep the hook link, especially, floating on the surface. Anyway, a really good tip for get line grease. Remember, you heard it here first, use human grease. And where do you get human grease from? You get them from your sweat glands around your body. Not there, but here. By your nose, behind your ears. Everybody sweats just there. You just rub that along your hook link two or three times and it will stay up all day long. Now here's an angler that really needs very little introduction from me. It's a former record holder, Lee Jackson, and Lee visited Oxley's Lake earlier this year. Now I know Lee can catch fish, well, from a water butt. And uh, quite an angler. Let's see how he gets on with those Oxley's carp. Well, it's five o'clock in the morning. Quick sort of summer morning. And we're here at Oxley's Lake over in Oxfordshire. And we're going to try today to catch some carp on the most famous boilie of all time. As orange as the sky. And from John O'Groats to Land's End, there can't be any more famous boilie and the rich were frozen tutti fruities. So we're going to get a few of these little orange wonder balls and uh, as orange as the sky and we'll see how the session progresses. There we go, first one in the morning. There I was, swimming along, minding my own business and I saw this little orange ball early. I thought, well, I'll eat that. There you go. My first ever Oxley's car. Get it back and see if you can get another. Tench, it? Look at him. You don't mind catching tench when they're that big. a bit of fish this one. And there we go, started getting a few line bites and uh, dropped one a little bit shorter. It certainly put a good old scrap up in this, in this lake. So it feels a better fish but you, sometimes you can never tell. There you go. You know, a little Oxley's bar of gold. Dump back on him, isn't he? Well, I work in a busy tackle shop and uh, the tackle box at Dartford. And I'm often asked the question, which boilie? I mean, the shelves are full of different flavours, different varieties, different colours. And likewise, nowadays, the freezers are, are the same, absolutely full up of different freezer baits and everything. 
And I always think to myself, well, there's one bait above all others that has probably caught more carp than any other freezer bait, and it's been catching carp for absolutely donkey's years. I mean, from lakes like Airfield in the in the 19 late 1970s through to sort of modern day big fish waters and everything. It's one bait that you can rely on that that can definitely catch you a carp when the when the going gets tough. And that's the old good old faithful Richworth Tooty Fruity.